bunch of me and not enough of you. Oh, we're good. And we're live. Hey, hey, hey. What hey. up, everybody? How are we all doing out there? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're getting started here. Yes, and we, we have a special guest here. Yes, we do. Your job. Come on. I am. Relax. If you don't know Mary Tiger, folks, you should. That's right. Rockland High School basketball player. And she just won a national championship with the Cal Stars. Yep. What up? What's up, guys? What's going on? So we're going to do a little bit of talking about what's going on first, then we'll get back to Mary, so she's going to sit here and look exactly her stellar national champion self for a little bit. But we've got some stuff. We the, the videos keep hitting, right? Yep. We got stuff out there you guys want to check Rusty out. Rusty Diamond. Rusty just Diamond just hit today. There's going to be some adjustments to the schedule. We're now back on Sunday nights. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday seemed to just be a better night for us than Thursday nights. And I think it's for people that watch. It was a little better for them as well. Um, so, hi, welcome back to Sunday nights. So we're going back to Sunday nights no matter what. If we are not able to do a live, we will have a show that we will have filmed before. Yes. That will be posted for Sunday night. Yes, we will. Um, so that's happening. But our Saturday show will now move back to Thursday. That gets posted. Um, like Rusty Diamond yesterday would actually be a Thursday show. So that's happening. So we're still three day, days a week. <clears throat> um, there's some really cool stuff that's happening. We have uh, Go. interviews starting tomorrow, right? Yeah. We, we got, got 40 interviews <clears throat> coming up in the next two and a half months. And we're adding another two in there right now yeah so we got so, a lot of shows coming your way folks and by the middle of that we'll probably hit our 100th episode right on the youtube show as far as our podcast go i think at the end of that we'll hit 100 episodes which is kind of cool yeah so we got a lot going on a couple of announcements to happen was um daraja we did a great video that you want to watch a uh, Daraja academy in kenya yes they just had to interview 200 plus girls they're 13 to 15 years old when they stop school when they hit 13 years old their school stops Boom, done. and they're either married off or they're off For some kind of, of slave cows. wage type of thing that they're doing so they don't have opportunities to move up so these girls my friend uh, jason created the school in kenya for girls so he only has so many spots 200 plus interviews and he's got to say no to some of these girls yeah um, we personally, the show actually sponsors Melvis, and I just found this out, which is incredible. I don't know if you read it, but Melvis was the last late person they were able to add, and she didn't have sponsorship money, which is one of the reasons why we jumped in. And she was the top student in ninth grade at Daraja. So I believe that a lot of that had to do with what up with Robin Chris. No, Melvis did it on her own. Really proud of her. And all those girls, girl. are just, it's a really incredible. These girls are going to have amazing lives and be in business and really to help the country grow. Yeah. So amazing, amazing opportunity cool. for that. So go watch the show with Jason. I'm working on something. We might get a, 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 a Zoom from Kenya. Really? And hopefully Melvis will be able to join us on a Zoom. Our internationally local flair. That's right. So the internet's not it. great there, but we're going to see if we can make it work. That'd be cool. <clears throat> so that's happening. The other thing is uh, we just did last night, we went on a ghost tour. Oh, my God. That was so Around cool. Truckee. And then afterwards, we had some things happen. Yes, we did. So when Very that show cool. hits, you're going to want to watch. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to watch that. I'm the biggest skeptic in the world. And honestly, some stuff happened that you I... turned white. Ghost white. It's not happening. Let's just wow. say that. So ghost tour happened. Yeah, you're like, we're crazy. <laughs> This poor girl has no idea what she got herself into. But what I'd also like to bring up, even though she has no idea what she got herself into, is the USA LABC down in the Dominican Republic. One of my coaches or our coaches for Prospect U Northern California. Yep. Shout out. Um, and five or six of our players went down to the Dominican Republic this past week and they ended up winning the championship. And probably, in my opinion, either the toughest or second or third toughest division or down there. Now, I've gone eight times. I've only won four, which is pretty phenomenal because it's the toughest tournament in Latin America. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, with that going on, I wanted to bring up the Olympics. I know that we've been watching the Olympics, watching softball, which is kind of near and dear to my heart. U.S. won silver. Japan won gold, Canada 
won uh, bronze. And I'll tell you what, it was a pretty phenomenal tournament. I loved watching Japan. Stepped up, played, wow, amazingly. Um, so that was and, our Olympic moment. Oh, hold on, standby. Oh, there's more that. Olympic moment. Standby, moments. relax. New Zealand won today against France women's rugby in the Super 7s. And I got to watch the rugby team do the haka or the women's version of the haka, which I may be saying it wrong. And you want to talk about pride and power and, and enthusiasm. If you get a chance to see that, find it and watch it. It's unbelievable. It truly is. It literally almost brings a tear to your eye watching them do this. Right on? Yeah, I thought it was cool. cool. That's our Olympic moment for the night. There you go. Thank you. All right, back to what up with Robin Chris. Yes. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, super producer is here. Um, if there's any questions or statements, just uh, give us a heads up. Um, cause we can't see it from where we're at right now. And should let us know if there's anything that comment on anybody that's watching. Um, yes. cause I know Rockland is definitely here to talk about Mary. So Mary, Hey, how are always you? always something about Mary. So What's we're going to go ahead into the Mary Carter and it's always Mary Carter. Just so you know, it's Mary never Carter Mary, maybe a little Carter, but it's always Mary Carter. Yep. Always goes to Mary Carter. Never opposite of that. Right. He was at home or. No, it's just when on the basketball court. When she's in trouble, it's yeah, Mary Carter. Does the middle, middle name come middle out? name in there, right? No. It's just Mary Carter. Just Mary Carter. And then there's that term, Mary Carter. Anyway. All right. So, again, we originally mentioned the national championships. We're going to dive right into that. Let's go. She's on an AAU team, Cal, Cal Stars. Cal Stars, and they're based out of? The Bay. The Bay. Area. Oh, Bay Area. Okay. Which part of the Bay Area? <laughs> Uh, Amy, okay, cool. Near water. Yeah, yeah near water. Near water. Sure. <laughs> Little inlet there. It's the city know. by the bay, you know, right? So. Ass. <laughs> so they went to the Nike National Championships, right? Yes. Huge, biggest tournament. Dad's here, by the way. So I might be looking at Dad sometimes. <laughs> it's it's EYBL. It's what? EYBL. 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 Okay, so oh, this is a huge. Huge national tournament, top players all across the country. Are they international too? No, just, no, just Canada. Oh, Canada is too. So it That's is international. Uh, international. It is. So this is great, and there were major college coaches there, right? That's watching you, yeah. watching your teammates, and um, watch you, watch you. how many? Like how long was the tournament? It was about five days, I think. Okay. So we were wow. there on the 19th. We had practice, and we had starting games. Just like, or we had one more practice, and then a bunch of games. And we had to get COVID tested a lot because of the. Like every day or multiple times was, during the day. It was or? every day, so we got yeah. tested every day except for the semifinal day and the championship day. Okay. So. Lots of COVID something. testing. Everything's safe yeah. and protected. Um, did you feel that there was like a an ebb and flow to the tournament, did you find there were just some teams that, although you beat everybody, that you were just like, wow, those guys legitimately could have won this championship? Yes, for there... sure. There was a lot of surprises in this in this tournament that we all thought certain teams were going to make it to the like Final Four or the Elite Eight or whatever, and yeah. they got knocked out in pool play. Oh. And so it was, a lot, it was a lot more interesting than we were expecting yeah. it to be. So um, the team that I think that could have won it for sure was the team we played in the semifinal game, Philly Rise. Okay. They, at Boo, when we were at Boo Williams, they only beat us by four, and they only ended up beating us, or sorry, we beat them by four. And then at this tournament, I think they only beat us, or we beat them by one. Oh, that close. So Ooh. it got really close. So that was a team that for sure is one of the top teams yeah, that nice. we played against. So on top of that, they're on ESPN. Yes. And you got a shout out. Right? So the shout out was because I scored nine points in two minutes in that Philly Rise. Nine game. points in two minutes. Yeah. So yeah. not only is she eight foot seven, <laughs> I mean, no, she's foot seven two. foot twelve. Get it right. <laughs> she's six foot two. She can shoot the three. And I was told at the beginning it's like sixty eight percent. Sixty eight percent shooting from the three point line. Yes. Can I get a what what? Okay, so this girl's got some recruiting happening right now. Oh, I can't yes. talk about it unless she feels like she can or not. But 
some really cool schools that are really starting to talk and it's getting more serious now. So you're, you're going to see Mary in the next level. Yes. You what you right now you can go see her at Rock. That's what's gonna happen this this winter is you you have a really cool school and team that you also are a part of at Rock on High. What tell me about the atmosphere there. So you're gonna be a junior, right? You had a freshman year obviously come in, sophomore year. There's been changes. Now you've grown a lot. What do you kind of expect in your growth and how that translates back into your high school? I think that this season at Cal Stars has kind of like helped me mature mentally. And I think that that's going to help me become a better leader to my teammates at, at Rockland. Yeah. Like just being able to be more encouraging and just hyping people up, which I may have struggled with when I was a freshman and a sophomore. It happens though, right? So it's definitely <laughs> something that I'm much better at because I got to I got to feel how it felt when other people would encourage me. Yeah. And I really I love that feeling, so I know I now I can share that with others. Did that happen at the like the national level? You felt you got support yes, like that was I, different than you normally had. That's kind of showed me like I can show other people what it could take to get there. Yeah. And we obviously want to be the best we can be at Rockland, so just little things like that to help us become better. Yeah, go ahead. So that it, that whole segment there brought up something for me, for you. And where would you say from your freshman year till now, how much have you grown mental toughness-wise? Oh, a lot. Freshman year was, mm, that was not, that was not good. I would get so down on myself and so upset about little things that weren't really necessarily that important. And now going through adversity, like true adversity with this Cal Stars team, knowing what it feels like to be at the bottom of a roster and having to get back up, it's kind of helped me a lot to kind of understand where other people are coming from. And like, I can kind of relate more. Makes you grow to yeah. a little bit too. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Get those feelers out there going, hey, I need to do this to do that to achieve this, exactly. right? No, I love it. That's definitely something I hear. Now for you, Mental part of the game, right now, how much of it? Give me a percentage. How much of it compared to like this school life? Do you think yes. like I think we're, like as a freshman, you you had your natural ability yeah. that were, and maybe the mental game wasn't as big. Now, how much more of a percentage is the mental game? Oh, I think game, it's as opposed to your physical. It's game. probably like over fifty percent, just because I've trained so much, like things like just for example, like shooting. How, like I've gotten up so many shots, so it's kind of like something that's just automatic for me. Yeah. Now it's the mental of like having confidence when I'm shooting, knowing that it's going to go in. Because if if you're like, oh, I don't know, is this is this a good shot? And it's like, well, that shot might not go in because you're not confident in it. Yeah. So that's part. It's it's a it's a lot bigger than I realized. I think because freshman year I didn't really understand that. I was just like, mm -hmm. let's go to the gym. Like, I'm gonna work on this part, but. I don't understand how important it is to like really believe in yourself and yeah. like you have to be able to talk yourself out of stuff because that's really important. So when you've had down moments like maybe in the Cal Stars, have you found found a way that the other players have picked you up differently than you've had before? Like when you're it, it, you're gonna have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a struggle, what is that like? What have you learned in the struggle from other teammates that you feel like you can bring back? I know it's a tough question. So. Yeah. Just the encouragement piece, I think, yeah. is still the same thing. Like, just being able to, they understand, and they are, like, always there to give you a pat on the back. Or, or if you need to talk to them about something, they're always there to talk to. If you have a question about something, they're not going to be, like, why are you asking that question? Or something yeah. like that. So it's always, it's really nice to know that, like, in the back of your mind, if you're not really doing well, you always know you have your teammates to kind of, like, back you up. And that's something I want to bring to Rockland. Like we we do we do get along, but I feel like there's some more there's some more things that we could do to really encourage each other. Yeah, that's gotcha. something I want to do. What about the speed of the game for you? How much has it sped up, and you've been able to slow it down? The speed of the game is a lot different. Like compared to high school and the YBL, it's it's insane. Like you don't really realize it until you're like in the game. Mm -hmm. And I think like. That is something I definitely had to learn and kind of be able to, like I was saying, like talk myself like, okay, this isn't really that fast. Like, you know how to do all this stuff. It's not like you're, you can't let other people speed you up. You need to be able to play at your speed. 
or slow and, you down. Yeah. yeah. You can't let people slow you down because, yeah. you know, you went to this event and then you could go and do high school and it exactly. is slower. Yeah. You can't slow down. You got to keep going. Yeah. You got to blow by him. You got to be playing at that speed. Again. And that's another thing I want to bring you off of yeah. is just the speed of it. Because if we can play at that speed and move the ball at that speed, like it's really hard to stop that. Absolutely. Absolutely. When was the realization for you that you can actually slow that game down? Um, I think after the April tournament, I kind of was like, I, that's where I kind of grew the most mentally. And I think that that's kind of where I realized, like, I don't need to have other people controlling it. It's like, I can control it. a girl. Good, so, good, good. Now, with that being said, this is one of my favorite questions I like to ask athletes, okay? Regardless if you're down here or playing professional ball, that first step. And then the second step. How important is that first step? Like the first step. That first step. So when I say first step, the first step always has to be a positive step. Uh -huh. It can't be a negative step. Right? Because the minute that you have a negative step, you're behind that much. Yeah. Right? And technically, you lose that moment. Right? So for you... How important is that first step? And let me try to change that question up a little bit for you. The small things. Mm -hmm. So people will go through, you go up and shoot, you play and stuff. How important is working on the little things? That what is how important is that in changing your game? I think it's kind of where okay. it's I, I think that that is like something that's insanely important that doesn't really get like I would hear that when I was in like freshman year and stuff and I'd be like, eh, whatever, like, yeah, who cares about that? Like, it's something that's kind of cliche mm -hmm. to say, but it really is like some little things that I can change in my game that makes me so much better. Like a, like I'm a role player or I'm a superstar type thing. Just it. like little things like just how fast you shoot, like how fast you dribble when you pick the ball up, like all this little stuff, like how fast your first step is when you drive, all these little things that you don't even really know or recognize, but like it really does make a really big difference when you're playing. Yeah, I got you. Now when you look at, sorry, I gotta go off of this because you're giving us some great information here and you've given our folks some great information some, and hopefully some young ball players see this. Um, looking at an opponent and you see that that first step is a false step, and you sit there and go, I know that I can key off of that to drive to my right and shoot. Mm -hmm. Do you sit there and kind of put it in the bank and utilize it against them? Sometimes I think I overthink it too much. Oh, yeah. Because I'll That's look at it and then, like, yeah. I'll be like, okay, there's like this option, I have this option, I have this option. And then, like, that's something I need to work on is just picking one and going with it. And you. if it's wrong, then I do a counter. That's kind of like what I, that's one of the things I need to work on. Because I, I do overthink a lot. <laughs> well, let me. Don't we all? Yeah. That, yeah. How much honest. do you get of knowing other girls? Like, you know, this girl only goes to her right. That is yeah. something that's, that's a big advantage, right? That is something that's easy. If I know something for sure, right? That's easy. But if it's like, mm, I don't know, maybe they'll maybe they'll do this, maybe they'll do this. That's when I kind of picking like, it up in a game. I think yeah. is what I think he's kind of going, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you pick yeah, that up in a game and take advantage of that, which is mm -hmm. really that's tough because a lot of people don't see those things. Yeah. And I think at, as you progress, that's big advantage of becoming a superstar, right? Mm -hmm. Is seeing that stuff. Um, let's talk about the amount of time you put in, because this is where I'm going to lead down now to some things that I do know about okay. that I'm going to shock you with, but Don't go <laughs> um, you put in a lot of time. Let's just give me, a, on a weekly basis, what, how much time do you spend in basketball? On a weekly basis? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Don't tell me one or two, because I know it's No. <laughs> like, it's at least, I don't know, at least, like, if you just did an average, at least an hour a day. Yeah. Sometimes more, depending on if I'm doing, like, a training session with one of my trainers and doing, like, plyometric training or something like that. Right. So it just kind of depends. So I'll probably say, like, like maybe eight hours a week. That's a lot. Right and you're a student and you have a lot going yeah. on to do that as well. So when the, I led that because she said plyometric training. She's not only practicing for basketball she's you're doing the physical work to yeah. be a better yeah. athlete yeah and so because of that i happen to know about 
something that was put out there, you know where I'm going, that he said that he was going to make sure that you could dunk by the time you were a senior. Yes. Is did. that happened or is it going to happen? I can touch the rim. Okay, we're at the rim now. <laughs> All we got to do is get, what, 18 more inches higher? Yeah, exactly. Is that what it is? Okay, okay. All right, you got it. So it's still a process. We're getting yeah. there. We can touch the rim. Senior year, we're expecting a dunk. We'll see. We'll see. I know. <laughs> I know that's why Andy's over here sitting there going, oh, God, please don't put that pressure on her. <laughs> you bums don't. No, but I think that's really cool because I think you put out a big goal for you. Yeah. And you may not. It's like reaching for the stars and hit the moon, right? Yeah. Like, and I think that was a big mental thing he was putting into you as you you started young how young did you start with him working like seven years old yeah, probably. yeah. That, so that's the process she's been working knowing she wanted to be a basketball player knowing she wanted to be an elite basketball player she started at seven year olds working on her physical ability as an athlete and and her trainer who you know happens to be somebody who knows not to take a seven year old and just start throwing a bunch of weights yeah. and lifting yeah. developing a a player in a wonderful way safely for their age and their growth and you know girls and growing in a certain way and, and, and boys as you grow knowing what to do in there so a big uh, kudos to that but also you knowing that you want to do that yeah I think that's a huge part so I'm giving you kudos as well but also that goal of dunking you know that may not have to be the thing but the fact that you're like hey, I can touch the rim now yeah well that's a big step yeah you know most I I mean I could dunk from the three-point line when it's in high school <laughs> That's how the stories always go. It gets better and better the older yeah. you get. But the reality is that having the goal into reaching that is incredible. When we think of you as tall, people think down low and scoring yeah. down low and being that way. But you shoot three pointers. You play outside yeah. on the park, so your game is both. Yeah, it really is. You. We were talking before. Versatility. You can play every position. Pretty much. Yeah. Point guard, if the I two, to. the three, okay. the four, and you said you love defending. Them. Yes, I it's kind of easy. You like to do that, but what is your favorite? Like, let's let's just go right to you. what's your favorite moment that you or thing you did in basketball. What's the thing you did in basketball? You're like that was my best I ever did. Like my biggest moment. Was it just now or did it happen when you were younger? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I think that like as of right now, I think that that. Philly Rise game was probably my best moment because I didn't have very much time and I was still able to really contribute. And like I said, we only won by one point. Right. So those were really huge and the timing of them were really big and there was a lot of pressure on me. So I think those that was like, I was like really, really like excited when that happened. And yeah. I was just like really pumped on the bench. I was like, yes. Like, I so really it was a team me. thing. Yeah. It, that's, that's a big telling thing on your mental growth. Is that it wasn't even necessarily what you did. Yeah. It was the fact that you as a team did something that your yeah. favorite moment. That's a that's beautiful. That is. I mean, dad is that's pretty incredible to have that kind of an answer, don't you think? I mean, you could be like, hey, I I threw the ball up at half court and I didn't even look at it went in. That's what you might get an answer. But she was like it was a team thing, and I was she was on the bench. It was a favorite moment. So I think that's just beautiful. I I love that. Yep, team yeah. player, period. Team player, that's huge, and it's it's a big growth into your – oh, yeah, I'm proud of you. I've known you for a long time. That's what, I, That was a really proud answer for me to hear you say that, so I love that as athletes. When he was talking about a little earlier about that first step, we actually interviewed somebody who played in the NFL, and he just kind of got a sniff. He was around for a couple of years. But one of his things he talked about was Jonathan Ogden. He's yes. one of the best – Tackles that ever played. Ever. Big monster. And bird. And, and seven Brent, foot, eight foot, 12. Uh, six foot, eight, but he was a monster. And eight foot, 12. Played for the Baltimore Ravens. And Brandon, Brendan said they would go out 20 minutes out early. He, he, Ogden would go grab the entire line, get them out 20 minutes before practice, and they only worked on their first little tiny step. For 20 minutes, it was. It was that. four inches. That. Not six, yeah. not three. Not five, but four inches, if I remember him saying. And that was the difference between being dominant and yeah. not. And so you even alluded to some of that as that well. That is very true, yeah. And so as you grow, you're just a junior. You still got two more years of high school. You still got a lot of growth, and you got college. Those little things that you're working on, not only as an athlete, but also as going in and doing, working with Dave Warner. We're going to say Dave's name. Dave's awesome. So you know, big thing to Dave. He's your other. He's your trainer. 
But he also works on those little things, and I don't think you notice that he really yeah. works on the little things. With he does, you. he does. And so that's just something that I'm also really proud that you've instilled in yourself to do that as well. So let's talk. Um, I mean, I've kind of blown my brain out on all the stuff that uh, we can talk about. You got anything to throw in there? You know what? I actually do. Be afraid, folks, really, honestly, <laughs> especially non -disciplined. What are some of the things? I mean, you play basketball. We know you're like a 12.0 student. What are some of the things you like to do outside of the game? I really like, I like to go shopping with my friends. That's really fun. Fabulous. Yes, yeah. I do. I do like to go shopping. Um, I really also enjoy cooking and baking. That's oh, nice. Nice. All right. We're Here two we fat guys. What do you like to cook and bake? <laughs> uh, my favorite thing to cook, I make these chicken, chicken parmesan like patties and like I fry them up. And then I put like sauce and cheese and put them in the oven. Those are. <laughs> you just you just got Chris. <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. Yes. I like that. But what about baking? Do you have little special? Um, little I like to just try like when my mom lets me. Oh, I, oh. I like to try fancy desserts like one of those. I'm not necessarily the best at baking. I can bake like cookies and yeah. cake and stuff, but I like to try different things. So you just so. try like creme brulee. I tried to make macaroons before, and that, oh. that did not really work out. But it didn't work I think out. I know what I did wrong, <laughs> so I know how to like change it. But I don't know. I have a hard time boiling water, so you know I, <laughs> that's, that's not true. This guy can cook. He can cook really well. I learned it from my mom. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mom! Did you hear that? She learned it from you. So. How to make macaroons? No, no, just how to like cook in general. <laughs> She's watching, isn't she? she I'm is. sure she is. She is. <laughs> Hi, well, Mom. I'm, how are you? I think you're done out there. <laughs> you have the conversation with her mom. Yeah, why not? Right on. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna go in the game. Oh, Nelly, it's time. It's are you time. ready? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> either way, okay. it's okay. <laughs> so we play this game. Anybody who's watching can join. That's live. We have a lot of people to watch after our lives. Hundreds of people. So, um, this is called Stump Robin Chris, and because we have a high school student here. It's the SAT edition. Oh, so Mary, yes. sh Mary Carter should know all of these. Mary Carter. If you don't, you got some studying to do, girl. Got a lot of studying. That's right. I don't know. So the first one is garrulous. So now I tell you a definition. Yeah, you have yeah. to tell us what it means. And then, wait, you guys have to guess? No, we're going to give you a definition, too. Yeah. Like, Chris, uh, will start. What's garrulous mean? So... Garrulous is a aboriginal term, and it means to hunt. Okay. That's it. That's what it means, mm -hmm. right? Um, what do you think? Do you know what it means? No, well, what does it mean? <laughs> um, it means like something that's really big, giant. Oh, okay. I like it. I like yeah. it. Actually, my I happen to know this means to be very brave, very garrulous. You're brave. Yeah, like a hunter. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. Exactly. Not really, but it's <laughs> yeah. to be brave. Nah. How about it? What is it, producer? The definition is pointlessly or annoyingly talkative. Like Rob. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> so she yeah, you, you got you get me. the hang of it. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Pointlessly and narratively talking. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I should raise my hand very fast. <laughs> In show. But that's probably not even pronounced correctly. Yeah, wait, what? In um, In chote. In chote. Um, like you don't understand something. Like you're, uh, what's the word? Like incompetent, kind of? Okay, I like okay. it. In show. There we go. Yeah. So, you have to take the derivative of breaking it up, okay? okay. Inch, O, eight, okay? So basically what you're doing is you're, you're eating 108 inches, what? okay? In Inch, O, eight. <laughs> so it truly depends. It could be 108 inches of licorice. It could be 108 inches of toffee. So that's basically what it is. I give up. What is it? That's too funny. 
into it, being only partly in existence or operation, imperfectly formed or formulated. Exactly. So the ice cream machine, the McDonald's, that would be that. Intro. Okay. Yeah, see, yeah. It could, you pull it down and it introates out. <laughs> see? No points, Chris. Oh. Bring your eyes. For 10, you should know this one. For 10. This I know for 10, but not. Pro for 10. Um, it's in for 10. It's the end of a port. A <laughs> port end. Very good. I like it. There's that our high school answer right there for the SATs. <laughs> yes. So it is the complete and total opposite of pretend. So pretending you have to be whimsical and have an imagination and all that kind of good stuff. With portend, you have to be serious and you have to be to the point and exactly precise. That's what portend means. I think it means to just be prepared. So be somebody who is very prepared for what they're going to go into. Just tell me I'm right. You're not. <laughs> not right. Foretell. True. Serve as an omen or warning of. Indicate by prediction. Indicate so, by prediction. Ooh, foreshadowing. Yeah. Kind foreshadowing. of somewhat, some way. See, I was almost there. No, you yeah, I was close. What did you say was the word? Foretell. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember. No, portend. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, to portend, portend is it foretelling. We thought that was the word you were using. We were like, wait, it's portend, it's portend. <laughs> so, um, your mom said that she's glad that she's uh, good at something. Oh, okay. So, um, she's a teacher. Yes. What does oh. she teach? She does PE. PE. Well, the teacher also needs to work on these uh, SAT words for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she might know some of them, to be honest. There you she go. Was there you. That was him, not me. I, uh, mm, 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 no, I'm not getting in trouble for that one. Uh, calumny. 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 Ooh. Calumny. Uh, like, like a, <laughs> like a colony? That's what I think of when I think of that word. Like a colony of some strange animal. I like yeah. colony of some strange animal. All right. I like that actually. But you're wrong. Sorry. <laughs> but good try. Good try. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Basically, what it is is this. You ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. So, back when General George Custard was, you know, being defeated a hundred and something thousand years ago. He would put his men in colonies. So when they got attacked, they were just pretty, or do be attacking, they were able to be sent out quicker and faster. And just in case anybody wanted to know, that is your Cliff Clavin moment of the night. So basically you said it's the same thing as her, a colony. But he put no. them in a little colony. Yeah, they, they were, you know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically said the same thing. In a very no, I did In like a whole no, she went way up, of I went sideways and out. Yeah, I'd say that's not right. <laughs> Squirrel, what do you got? Well, your mom says that flashcards are in your future. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. but it's, it's, and that's just wrong. You should ask her, does she know any of these words? <laughs> She's going to say yes. She's got Google in front of her. Right. True. <laughs> she does. She does. You're right. So it is an attempt to spoil someone else's reputation by spreading lies. Ooh, that's a good word to know. A lies yes, spreader. <laughs> do we really want to know if any of these happen to be on the SAT? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do we even want to take the SAT anymore? Uh, right <laughs> now, this next class, the seniors won't, but you may end up having. Hopefully yeah. not. You'll be ready. Hopefully these so you're gonna have to be. You're gonna have to learn <laughs> yeah. these ones. Inimical. Inimical. Man, you get some marks. She always gets us. <laughs> this is the way she laughs because she sits there and just laughs at us all the time. Um. Let's see. Let's see. I have to like get my very little creativity going. <laughs> it's better than <laughs> chia, which we've had as an answer. 
Hey, Chia <laughs> is. That's the only flower. It's a pet. Know. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you ready for this one? What? My grandmother owned a flower shop. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's bad. All right, what do you got? Inimical, Chris. <sighs> so, this is a derivative of a billion trillion years ago when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, okay? And when they would go through and kind of forage, they inimically went through. So they didn't get eaten by a predatory animal that would come down and get them. So it's kind of more of a stealth type of for dinosaurs. For dinosaurs? Yep, that's it. <laughs> the stealthness of it's dinosaurs. dinosaurs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, duh. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Um, I'll say it's the opposite. It's like being Ooh. very like. Loud, loud and out there. Yeah, when you walk by something. That's actually pretty good. I want to hear what is it. Actually, it's hostile. I so think she gets a point. I'm going to award points for that one. Hey! Hey! hey. Rob still has zero. That a girl. Good job for the whole time we've ever played so the game. It <laughs> means to be hostile, inimical. That's actually a good word. Now you know I'm it. Right, yeah. an we've just game. moved the SAT up 20 points. <laughs> Where do we go? We got we usually have ten. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we're we're halfway. Ledger domain. Ledger domain? Oh, that's a piece Ledger of Ledger Domain. So in medieval times back in Ireland, okay, they had dinosaurs. No, not back in medieval times in Ireland. They had scrolls that they actually called domains. Uh, and when it was a ledger domain, it was in regards to the accounting that they had to pay for the gold pieces at the end of the rainbow for the <laughs> leprechauns. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what it is. That's exactly it. So accounting for the amount of gold if in the pot at the end of the rainbow. For the leprechauns. For the leprechauns. Yeah, in a right. ledger domain. We gotta be specific. <laughs> Got it? Okay. Okay. Mine's gonna be kind of boring. I, can't, I don't know if I can match that. Oh, that's that's okay. yeah, that's but uh, like a a legal document. It's a, a ledger domain. It's a legal document. Good answer. Good, Good answer. Good answer. What do you got, super producer? Are we even gonna try it anymore? I've been trying to slightly get out of them. So yeah, go I for it. What do we got? Ass. I see that. Well, on the next show, it's gonna be a history lesson because I'm worried about Chris. But it's, uh, it's deception or sleight of hand. Just like I said! That's kind of a strangely weird way to... Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm not worried uh, any points. Yeah, that's not close. Oh, to come on! No points. <laughs> can you believe that? Yes, I can. Of, yes, I see you obstreperous. Later. Whoa. Um, how about you go first? Well, if oh, you go yes. to the dictionary, <laughs> oh, there's okay. actually a picture of what this is, and it's a picture of Chris, and it means to go on tangents. Okay. Squirrel moments. I like it. <laughs> um, mine is going to be to be, like, quiet and what's the word? Shy? Or yeah, like, I was like, what? Absolute means like by yourself, right? Doesn't it? What does absolute mean? That's the next word. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just say by yourself. I like, like it. I like it. So, obstreperous. You know, this actually comes from the Latin of geometry. Okay. <laughs> Latin of geometry? Mr. Isaac Newton, who had no clue about Latin, came up with this word, and what it is, is it's a spherical shape that isn't actually an obtuse triangle, but it's obtiverous. <laughs> well, well how would you like to answer me. that one for us, Super Producer? Well, I'm actually going to award Rob a point because it is noisy and unruly, oh. which is... <laughs> True. Like first one. Woo! 
my first one I answered. Ever. I know. It's me. <laughs> you know why it's that one. Yeah. Yeah. Pugnacious. It's the pug animal. It's like a crazy pug. A crazy pug. <laughs> crazy, yeah. I like it. Always wanting to fight. Always a brawler. Let's go. At any time, at any moment. Let's go. I'm on to the same thing because I happen to know that my pug is very pugnacious and that they can get a lot of energy out of just nowhere. And so this is to get a lot of energy and like getting that second wind in life, that kind of thing. All right, all award points to all three. It's quarrelsome or combative. Quarrelsome and combative. Okay, so we were all pretty close. That's right. Good job, good job. Mm. You're in the you're, lead. You're doing you better yeah, on the SATs. Two more. Dos mas. Oh my gosh. Okay. Revolt. Um. You get, like, when you grow your hair back after you revolt, and then you get a <laughs> Good answer. So you like revolt. Revolt. Yeah. <laughs> That's all good. That's a good one. What do you got? No, no, you go. Revolt? Yeah. Um, so actually, it is. For you, that's why she wrote it. It actually has to do with basketballs. When all those little grippy dots kind of go away, it's revolting. Oh. On the wall. Ooh, that's really interesting, but you're wrong. Yeah. Sorry, just thought I'd Thank you, could have. So, a revolt is actually the head of the bone, like a humerus or um, a femur, when they have to go in and fix it. They have to shave it off, and that's the revolt. That makes sense, but it's not right. It is coarsely or crudely humorous. So it has to do with humor. Humorous? I said humorous. Uh, you were talking about the oh, bone. Yeah, wrong. The last one is <sighs> stupefy. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what I was hoping you were going to go with that one. Yeah. When you make someone stupid, I guess? I don't know. I guess. So this one comes from the Britain, the Britain, the Britain, the British, and it is from a school in the north area, and the kids have to take a train to it, and they wear cloaks and all that stuff, and they actually go and try to get each other, and they say stupefy, and it means to freeze, to make somebody freeze and stop and that. You couldn't be more wrong, Rob. I'm just letting you know. I'm winning in points right now. Over you. It's dash. Well, that's the first time ever. Anyway, it's actually a song name from a band called Disturbed. It came out in the late '90s. Stupefy. And so, basically, are you, what talking, are you talking about? Superfly. No, that was the 70s. Get it right, Sparky. Know your music. So therefore, he wants you to stupefy. He wants you to get up and he wants you to... Rah! You know, basically, that's wow. what stupefy is. Wow, that was very... Uh, yep, that okay. a lot of energy. Yeah, so where are we at? How many points do I get? Well, I knew you were going to go with the Harry Potter reference. That's why I had to put this word in. Okay. And Chris, it's spelled differently. <laughs> But it, it is to astonish. To astonish. That's astonish. what I said. Ah, I'm astonishing. So this Mary won. This is the highest scoring game. It's the highest scoring game. We had, usually when you got to go back to the high school, we are not <laughs> smarter than a junior. Oh, nope. That's, that's <laughs> true. So thank you guys for all joining us. Great job. That a girl. Thank you. Great year ahead of you for everything. School, basketball, whatever you do. Learning. In your driver's license? I already got that. Oh, the oh, driver's license has Miller. happened. Yes. Definitely. Wow, how's that going? Parking is a little bit of an adventure. Parking's an adventure. Okay. Well, I'm not that bad. Mary Carter, <laughs> the parking <laughs> adventure coming at you next. So Mary Carter is out on the road, so just be aware. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Stay off the sidewalks, folks. That's all we ask. We, we are excited to have, um, well, first of all, really our first local athlete yeah. come through. Um, and we're going to have a lot of that. So your very first, we're combining with 65 Sports. Um, so your first local athlete, Rockland High School, 
really proud of what you've done in the national championship with your team and the growth and everything. Thank you for coming on. Thank you yes. guys for having and me. Yeah. We, I can't even wait to see you out there. We're going to be there at your games. I usually am <laughs> announcing against you. Yes. Um, not against, because I'm neutral, right? Yes. So I have announced her name a few times, which is fun. And then I'm sure Chris will be out there to see you as well. Probably more than likely, yeah. So thank you, everybody who has seen us live, and then all the people that are definitely going to be watching this after. Chris one last question. question. Mary Carter, one year from now, back here. Oh gosh! Wait, what do you mean? Exactly? He wants oh, you want to show? Yeah, I want to know. I want to know what's going on with Mary Carter. I, I, I want to know how many billions of offers you get and all that <laughs> kind of good stuff. All right. I'll be committed to. That too. Right. So when's commitment yes. day? Because that's senior year, right? That's like signing day. I I have a long time. I can wait. All right. Oh, so she's yeah. gonna hold out for the best offer. Why gotta make not? sure I find the right fit. That's the right, kind of what I'm you know oh, what? I like, like that. That's, that's actually brilliant. That's smart. That's why she's like a 12.0 student, folks. Okay. There's somebody who will be on our show, and they're Lincoln, and they're volleyball player, and she just finally committed right now. Okay. But she was the same way. She actually thought she was going to go to Stanford or Nebraska for for uh, volleyball and stuff, and she was down on a recruiting trip, looking at a school, and was watching how the other team was acting. And um, how they were having fun, and the team that she was looking at, that she thought she wanted to go to, was not acting the way she wanted. She wanted to be part of that team. Yeah. So your answer is brilliant in the fact that not only are they looking at you, but she's looking at you guys. Yeah. The college is out there. How are you work with your kids as well? And so that's just as important, don't you believe? Yeah. And so that's really telling. I think that's going to be a great story we're telling it as Mary goes through the career process. Her answer is brilliant in the fact that she's going to hold herself to work. What's a good fit for you? Yeah. Where you think you're going to fit in back. So I love What that. you're going to want to actually at that point in time think you're going to want to major in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It could change 17 times by then. <laughs> yeah. Right. It can. So, Andy, Dad, thank you. Thank you're you. You're a very big support for her. This is Carter Tara. Yes. Right? yes. She's watching. Thank I'm on. You. You've done an amazing job. You keep doing an amazing job. Um, thank you so much. And we're just excited for what she's doing. But thank you also for being an amazing parent for us. So yes. that's it for us with What Up with Rob and Chris. We'll be back here again next Sunday night. Lots of shows in between. 72 shows prior. Yeah. Tons of stuff to watch. Thank you for coming. What up? What up? Have a great night, folks. Yes. Be night. phenomenal. Awesome.